UFC returning to Canada this year, but this time not in the six. Um, but now in Edmonton, Alberta, a completely different province, and the main event will be Brandon Moreno versus Amir Albazi, which this fight was originally supposed to take place in Mexico, but Amir pulled out, I think, due to heart issues. I'm glad he recovered. Um, and Moreno, since that, fought um, Brandon Royval, but here we are. They're rescheduled now um, in Canada, and I'm going to give my breakdown of predictions for not just this fight, but the co-main event and, you know, the rest of the main card as well. I'm not going to be a casual. I will, I will address all of these fights. And I'm going to start with the main card opener, Mike Malott, proper Mike Malott versus um, Trevin Giles. This is a tricky one because I don't think neither guy is really that good, especially Mike Malott. I mean, you got knocked out by a featherweight in Hakeem Dawudu, which is very embarrassing on the regional scene, but still embarrassing. Um, and then got TKO by Neil Magny in his last fight, um, which, again, that is embarrassing. And look, I know Neil Magny is a dog, and I knew I knew Magny actually had a solid chance of winning that fight. I'm not going to lie. But that fight was going exactly how I predicted. I knew that Mike Malott was going to chop down the legs, and I knew that likely he wasn't going to be able to knock out Neil because Neil is weirdly hard to finish, depending on the level of opponent you are. And I knew Malott wasn't on that level, but I thought Malott could outdo him, slightly outstrike him, leg kick him, out grapple him to a decision which was happening and then he just gassed and quit and got finished in like with 40 seconds to go. He couldn't even hold on and coast. Um but Trevin Giles, he's no Neil Magny. Um he's no Neil Magny in terms of toughness or experience. Now I think he's more dangerous than Magny with his power and his striking but doesn't have the same level of cardio, doesn't push the same pace. I don't think his grappling is as good as Neil's. Um, and I feel like he's easier to finish than Magny. And we know Mike Malott is a big finisher. And we've seen Trevin Giles fold to powerful athletic guys. Drikis Duplessis slept him. And I know, no shame in that. DDP's the middleweight champion. But still, Drikis Duplessis, powerful, athletic. If Drikis can get his hands on you, it can be trouble. Michael Morales knocked him out. Carlos Prates knocked him out. Now, I think all three of these guys who I mentioned are obviously going to, they're better than Mike Malott, but Mike Malott is very dangerous with his hands. He does have power. He is athletic, and he does have good grappling too, um, and I do think that he could potentially outgrapple Trevin Giles. It's a tricky fight. It, it can go either way, but I'm going to say that Mike Malott's going to bounce back here with the win over Trevin Giles. Because I don't think Giles is as good as Neil. Um, and I feel like Malat is going to come in this fight with a chip on his shoulder. And he's not going to want to, you know, fumble in Canada again. Uh, I think he's going to really want to get back in the win column. Um, and I feel like this is just not as big of a step up as Magny was. So I'm going to say we're going to see another impressive um, Mike Malat finish. But this is like the only level of competition he can beat. He can only beat the likes of the unranked, not the ranked in the division. But we'll see. And now moving on, um, we got Mark andre Barriou versus um, Dustin Stolzfus. This is a tricky one. I mean, both guys got brutally knocked out in their last fight. Both guys are stylistically similar. Both guys are good grapplers. Um, Mark andre Barriou has better takedown defense, um, but Stolzfus has better takedown accuracy. I think this fight will probably come down to the striking. And I think Mark andre Barriol is slightly a better striker, better defensively, better with accuracy. So I'm going to say Mark andre Barriol is going to edge this one and win a decision in a probably uneventful fight, but we'll see. Um, and then Kyle Machado versus Brenson Ribeiro. Both these guys' career paths in the UFC are similar. It's actually crazy. Both men... Um, are 0-2 in the UFC, unless you want to count contender series. That's like their only UFC win, but not officially. So they're 0-2. Both guys need a UFC win, and only one can win. And one's probably going to lose their job, but I'm going to go with the more athletic-looking guy here um, in Brenson Ribeiro. He's just more of a Chad. He's got that knockout power, and I'm going to say he's going to steamroll um, Kyle Machado in the first round. And then... We got Derek Lewis versus Janota Dinez, undefeated, 3-0 in the UFC, but I'm going with Derek Lewis. 
I feel like Derek only loses to a certain level of opponent. Okay, he just knocked out another Brazilian random in his last fight. I forgot his name. Um, Nascimento destroyed him. Um, destroyed another Brazilian before that, minus Jailton Almeida. But again, Almeida, different level of opponent. He's a top-tier heavyweight. He's got high-level grappling. And Janata Dinez is like a striker. Um, he's got power, and he's a striker, but Lewis has experience going up against Volkov, Pavlovich, and Ganu, who he beat, and he's the last man to beat Ganu. Um, so I'm going to go with Lewis, a little more athletic, um, good kicks, good with that jumping switch high kick, good at using that to set up his punching combos, and even if Janata's Dinez is doing good or has success, I feel like eventually Lewis is going to be able to put hands on him and uh, is going to get another Derek Lewis knockout. Black Beast in this hoe. Um, so I'm going to go Derek Lewis knockout within the first round. Um, and now the co-main event, Aaron Blanchfield versus Rose Namunas. I cannot wait for this fight. Very, very interesting fight. Very, very close fight on paper that could really go either way. Um, but I just feel like, I don't know, Rose's last performance, even though the level of opponent in which it was, which was Tracy Cortez, not that good of an opponent, but still, man, still, Rose looked the best she's ever looked in that fight against Cortez. Like, she has not looked that good since her title run when she became a two-time champion three years ago or when she became champion the first time. She looked on a whole other level, whereas Blanchfield did not look that good in her last fight against Manon Firo, who also beat Rose, but Rose gave a way better showing in that fight against Manon on one hand than Aaron, a healthy Aaron did. And Aaron, I think her problem was she tried too hard to be a striker in that fight, barely shot a single takedown, but then again, Manon has really good takedown defense, really good footwork, so maybe the shots just weren't that available, but I think Nami Yunez is a way better overall striker, a way better boxer. Blanchfield gets hit a lot. Blanchfield has low takedown accuracy. Her takedowns do get stuffed a lot. I know Rose has 59% takedown defense, but Rose's takedown defense is very solid. Um, she's got good active footwork, which makes it very hard to find a good shot on her. And then when you do, Rose has very good balance. And if you get her down, Rose is very hard to control on the ground. She's very good at getting back to her feet. So I do think that Aaron is going to struggle working her wrestling in this fight against Rose. Um, and I think Rose can get her own takedowns. I mean, J.J. Aldrich was able to take down um, Aaron Blanchfield and was piecing her up. And Rose Nama Yunez is a different level from a J.J. Aldrich. Tyler Santos was piecing up Aaron Blanchfield, but she gassed out. Now, I do think Tyler's better than Rose, but Rose has the footwork, a different level of striking. We know Rose can go five rounds, um, but Aaron is not Tracy Cortez, which does make this fight so tricky to predict because Aaron could implement her grappling in this fight. Like if she's actively shooting for takedowns, like she shot three, take, three takedowns against Manone, but 14 against Tyler. So if she pushes that same wrestling pace that she did in her last fight and it's five rounds, Rose can be gotten to. She can be broken. I can see Rose melting in this fight and Aaron is very tough. And then that redheaded Canadian subbed Rose in that grappling match, Jillian Robertson, and Aaron has very has a very dangerous submission game. Her rear naked chokes are good, man. But I don't know. I just feel like Rose is just on this. I don't know. I feel like this year she's on this three fight arc where she's going to complete her three wins. And I feel like we might just see Rose go 3-0 in 2024 and get her third straight win. And I just feel like Rose, we're going to see her in title contention come 2025. And Rose has always been my initial pick. And I could see how Aaron wins this. But every time I switch from my initial pick, I'm always wrong. I know my women's MMA picks have been very bad lately. I used to be good at this. I'm terrible at picking women's MMA fights now. But I'm a go with Rose Nami Yunez. I'm a Rose Nami Yunez fan. I've supported her for years. I think I'm just going to pick her. 
Um, just because I feel like she's better. Now, I feel like if this was a three-rounder, I would be more confident in Rose, but I feel like Rose Nami Yunez should be able to outdo her in the first two rounds in terms of striking. I do think that she is going to kind of beat Aaron at her own game early too with the grappling. Rose has very has like a very good um, body lock trip takedown. She's very good at getting her opponents with this faint one-two combo into a body lock trip. She's very quick and sneaky with that. That hits on almost every opponent. She got Tracy with it. She got Jessica Andrade with it in both fights. Yoani and Jacek with it. Zhang Wei Li with it. I feel like she's definitely going to get down Blanchfield with that. Now, is she going to hold her down? Probably not, but it is going to score her points. And I think Rose will be able to piece her up. Um, I just think we're going to see another Rose wins three fights in a row just to lose the next one, but... I don't know, Rose Nami Yunez, she just has momentum. She's got momentum, and I feel like Blanchfield got exposed badly in her last fight. I feel like the blueprint has been written on how to beat Aaron Blanchfield, and I think Rose is going to follow suit. And again, Rose of the two had a way better performance um, against Manon with one hand, with a broken pinky. She did better than Aaron Blanchfield, and I know... Styles make fights and MMA math doesn't always work, but I just feel like Rose is better. She's a former two time champion, and when Rose Nami Yunez is mentally on, she's very, very hard to beat. Okay, Rose is better than Jessica Andrade, who Aaron beat on short notice. Who before Aaron was able to find the finish, she was getting hit a lot, she was getting her takedown stuffed. And I feel like if you know. Andrade can defend a majority of your takedowns on a short notice camp. I think a full camp Nami Yunez can defend a lot of her takedowns and do even better in the striking. She's going to be even harder to hit than Andrade, and she's going to be stinging um, Aaron Blanchfield with those shots. Um, so yeah, I'm going to predict Rose wins this by decision. Um, I think Aaron will probably start to catch up a little bit by the third round. I think the fight's going to be decided by round three. I think Aaron is going to take the late rounds against Rose. I do think Rose will slow down, um, but I think she'll be able to survive the late rounds and coast. And maybe the third round, Rose is out striking her, but she slows down just a little bit. Maybe Aaron's pressure is starting to be a little bit more effective and she's able to touch Rose a bit more. But I feel like Rose will still be able to do slightly more with the striking. And then Aaron will probably start picking up momentum in like rounds four and five. And she'll probably get her takedowns on like a tired Rose. Um, but I think Rose will be able to, you know, intelligently defend herself if they're on the ground. Or if, you know, Aaron's hugging her against the cage. Um, and I'm going to say Rose wins 48-47. UD could be an SD to a split decision as well. Because like I said, round three could be the deciding factor here. Um, but I just think Rose is going to win with her superior striking athleticism and take down the fence and some of her own takedowns against Aaron Blanchfield. And I feel like we're just, we're looking at a Rose Nami Yunez title run in 2025. Um, and we're going to see another straight loss, a second straight loss for Aaron Blanchfield. I got to go with my girl Rose on this one. I don't know why I can just feel it in me that she's going to win this fight. It's just meant to be. Rose never loses after winning one fight or two fights. It's always after three fights. So again, I think Rose is on her three-fight arc, and she's going to go 3-0 um, in 2024. But we'll see. I could be absolutely wrong. Maybe Aaron does win this fight. Maybe she outgrapples her. Maybe she subs Rose. But yeah, I'm going to go with Rose. Um, and then the main event, Amir Albazi versus Brandon Moreno. Um, tricky fight. Because I feel like Moreno has advantages on the feet. I feel like he's a way better striker. Um, now, let's look at their grappling. Moreno's got like 63% takedown defense. I don't know why Albazi has like 40% takedown defense. But uh, Moreno has shown he can be out grappled. Pantoja, who I think is a lesser wrestler, was able to get a lot of takedowns on Brandon Moreno which did decide that fight because it was a close fight and it came down to those takedowns and the back control. And I feel like Albazi, he's very good at getting his takedowns and getting to the back. Um, so I think this could be another close fight here, but I just feel like right now at this point in their careers, I feel like Moreno is not motivated anymore. He's coming off two losses. 
he's been talking about, you know, taking time off, which is coming back sooner than we've than he said he would. He said he would like, I don't know, take a year off, but I feel like the headspace Moreno is in, he might be burnt out here, and I don't know if we're going to see a refreshed, motivated Brandon because he's already reached the top of the mountain, he's done it all, um, he's been a two-time champion, and he's been in so many wars, and the Brandon we saw in his last fight against Roy Vall, he fought a stylistically favorable matchup in Roy Vall, a, a fight where I thought he should have won relatively easily, and he didn't. He had the advantages with his boxing, with his inside fighting, and with his grappling. Couldn't make anything count with any of his advantages and got picked apart and lost via split decision, which I thought, looking back, Roy Vall clearly won the fight, unfortunately. And he already beat Roy Vall. So, I mean, what do you, th like, if you're struggling with Brandon Roy Vall, who stylistically should be favorable, imagine going up against someone like Albazi. I feel like Albazi is a little bit hungrier He's got a lot more to accomplish in this sport, and I feel like he has the mental edge. I feel like he's just going to want it more. Um, so I think we're going to see a more locked in, more switched on Amir Albazi. Um, I think he's going to put that pressure on Brandon Moreno, uh, get a lot of cage control, get a lot of takedowns. I think he'll get to the back of Moreno a lot. Moreno will have some moments in the striking, but I feel like the judges are going to count the grappling of Amir Albazi. And I just feel like Albazi is not going to be stopped until he gets a title shot um, in the men's flyweight division. I feel like Moreno had his time, and his time is done. And I feel like Albazi is going to get that number one contender spot off Brandon Moreno. Um, and his title run is going to start in 2025. So I'm going to go Amir Albazi by unanimous decision. Maybe 48-47. Maybe Brandon Moreno might outstrike him in like the first round or so. Because Albazi is not going to come out like a bat out of hell like Pantoja did. Um, and he's not going to hurt Moreno on the feet early like Pantoja. Or he's not going to keep that range like um, Roy Vall and make it tricky for Moreno to get to him on the feet. So I think Moreno should be able to outstrike him early. Albazi hasn't been the most active, so it might take him a bit to get started. But then I think maybe by round two, Albazi will start to work his takedowns on Brandon Moreno. Round three, he'll continue with the wrestling success. And then maybe like the fourth round, Moreno might wake up a bit and take back a bit of control with the striking, stuff a few takedowns, but then maybe round five, it'll come down to the fifth round, and I think Albazi will just blanket him like Pantoja did and win by decision two rounds or three rounds to two or maybe four, one. But we'll see. I could be wrong about either picks. I mean, I'm a little bit worried about Rose because she took Whitman out of her corner. And much respect to Pat Barry, okay? I'm not going to say anything about him. I'm not going to shit on Pat Barry here, okay? Um, but I don't know, man. I just, I would rather see her have Whitman in her corner. And I feel like cutting out Whitman, I mean, I don't know if that was a bad choice, to be honest. I feel like actually cutting him out and sticking with Pat and having just one head coach may have helped her stay focused because she has gone 2-0 this year and she has looked good lately. So you know what? I take that back. Um, but I just hope that it's just not going to prove to be a mistake in this fight because, again, I think Blanchfield is a way better opponent than Rebus and Cortez. And it's going to be a tougher fight. Um, but I have my faith in Rose. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I know Moreno's good, but again, I just feel like he's not hungry. I feel like he's demotivated. And the mindset and the focus and motivation between the Albazi and Moreno is just completely different. So, yeah, my picks for the co-main and main Nami Yunez and Albazi, but let me know your picks in the comment section down below. Um, like and subscribe. Turn the notification bell if you're new. Also, be sure to follow me on Patreon. I'm going to look to start posting content there. Uh, and also, follow me on Twitter at DJC. Um, I need to remove this thing. At DJC Combat uh, 23. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, turn the notification bell, and yeah, peace out.